Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 80th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the 20th episode of Season 2 titled Opposites Attract. At the Youth Center, Billy and Trini are talking about a device that Billy has built. He's going to be monitoring a solar storm today with it. Kimberly shows up with her friend Laura, who is going to help her lead the Angel Grove Angelettes into the forest to show them that they know how to use like a compass and earn a badge. Seems kind of sketchy if you ask me. Also, Billy and Laura are immediately taken with one another and Trini pokes fun at the situation with Billy. Billy says that he would join them, but she's the outdoorsy type, so they must have nothing in common. Shallow, Billy. Shallow. Zed is also now aware of the unstable magnetic field that is going to occur from the solar storm, and he plans to utilize this opportunity. At the youth center, the angelettes show up, and Kim gives them a box to carry before Bulk and Skull come in, just screaming at little girls. They also have a device to send a message to the Power Rangers via satellite, and Billy warns them to be careful. Laura says that she's a little worried about the storm, and Kim says, We have a compass, what could go wrong? When we smash cut to Zed going, Plenty could go wrong! <laughs> it's great. Oh, and Jason, Tommy, and Zach are working out together. At Billy's lab, he looks at a monitor saying it'll happen soon. Cool. In the woods, Kim and Laura have led the angelettes into the forest, and they tell them to walk around, and they find red flags they've gone too far. Also, if they get lost, they'll be using the buddy system, but worst comes to worst, sit down and just scream for help. I'm not sold that that's actually going to save them. They could just be abducted by predators. Speaking of which, Bulk and Skull are also in the forest with a machine trying to see if their machine is working at all to send message to the Power Rangers. Billy's in a park with a giant magnet device and a bunch of equipment and Zed sends down Goldar. And Billy just starts beating the crap out of the putties and Goldar. Man, Billy, you really glowed up. Unfortunately, Goldar steals a magnet anyways and Billy takes his frustrations out on the putties. He wins, and he states he has to go back to the command center. Goldar is still in the park, despite having teleported away, and he sets the device down, which Zed turns into a monster named Magnet Brain. He's going to control the planet's polarity, and we see that the compasses that the little girls have are freaking out while everyone in the juice bar is getting knocked all over like it's an earthquake. Also, money is just flying out of the cash register. That's not how a planet's polarity works at all. But then Bulk and Skull are freaking out and their machine sparks before a really fake bear shows up, looking like he's just about to go box them. Kim and Laura hurry to the Angelettes, and Zed says he wants Goldar to go down with putties to kill Kim. Kim is going to look for the forest ranger like they're going to know what the hell to do, and she calls Zordon, teleporting to the command center to meet up with the other five rangers. They get caught up about Magnet Brain, and they decide to split up with Tommy going to fight Goldar and the putties by the little girls, and the others will fight Magnet Brain. Something weird here is that Billy insists that he goes instead of Tommy, but Zordon basically says, Nah, you're too smart for this, so they split up. Then Magnet Brain attacks the five core rangers before putties show up, which leads into Tommy showing up to fight putties and Goldar by flying through the air. They're just getting a little string happy here. The angelettes talk about how cool the white ranger is because of course they do, before it's back to watching the rangers fight the putties, and Kim just climbs a pole. Tommy defeats all the putties, finally dealing with Goldar to the tune of Go White Ranger, which is just go green ranger with the color replaced basically. The others are still fighting putties before Magnet Brain fires at Jason who flies off of a bunch of piping and he and Zack are getting attacked. Tommy kicks Goldar hard enough to make him disappear while Kim throws a putty into a cardboard box. This is the most boring episode ever. Jason calls for the power blaster and the group bring them together firing at Magnet Brain who flies away. Zed then makes him grow forcing the rangers to call out their thunder zords forming the thunder megazord which they keep referring to as the Mega Thunder Zord. Magnet Brain fires a magnet at them, sticking it to them, but they just rip it off before they take out the Thunder Saber and brutally murder this dude, causing Billy's device to return. At the Youth Center, Kim and Laura give the Angelettes the bravery badge because they didn't panic during a serious situation. Then Bulk and Skull come running in, screaming about how the bear is still following them, and the Angelettes help them. Then Laura sees Billy hitting on him and telling him that she actually knows science and stuff, which Billy is totally into. The Angelettes help Bulk and Skull, and Zack and Jason laugh with the others when this episode just ends. This is a rough one, guys. You can tell the writers are really struggling with Die Ranger footage with Zero Ranger suits, and it's showing the cracks of this three-cent production. Unfortunately, that's not the worst news I have for you. 
This is the last episode three of the Rangers were even on set for. From now on, they'll be played by stand-ins, almost exclusively dubbed by impression voice actors in suit. And they'll just not be around most of the time. Which three? Well, next episode will make that abundantly clear. Trust me. Other than that, let's see how they try to write episodes about six characters with only three actors in the next episode. But until then, may the power protect you.